Welcome everyone to today's video. We're the Dimitrov Boulay Piano Duo. My name is Dimitri Dimitrov. My name is Sofia Boulay. And in today's video, we're going to talk about practicing without pedal. The reason for that is that recently I saw a guy on Facebook who actually broke his ankle and he asked for advice what kind of baroque and classical pieces he could practice without pedal because his right, right ankle was broken and so he couldn't use the right pedal of the piano and then I thought, you know what, it's it's such an opportunity in general, like, yeah, it's a terrible thing to happen, but it's such an opportunity for you to realize the hard way that practicing without pedal can be something very useful. A lot of people gave, gave advice that Baroque and classical pieces would be fantastic, and I thought a little further, I thought, not only that, but you can also practice romantic pieces without pedal. That could be extremely useful. And in today's video, we're going to mention a few of the benefits, no matter which style, no matter which style we, you practice, what are the benefits of practicing without pedal? Before we continue with the video, if you're enjoying our videos and you haven't subscribed so far, please do so because that helps us enormously. Let's get started. Now pedal is something very very beautiful and it's wonderful to play with pedal and especially I think that romantic music sounds not very satisfying without pedal and that, that's why we would always consider to, to play always more complicated music with pedal. Uh, but unfortunately pedal also kind of interferes with our hearing because pedal melds together the sounds you really have less of an idea of what's going on and that's why there's so many benefits to practicing without pedal. If you are subscribed, actually, you've been following us for a while, you do hear us mention it every once in a while, and you also can see when we're vlogging our practice that we regularly practice without pedal ourselves. And if you want to see us, by the way, uh, recently, last week, we uploaded a video on Rhapsody in Blue, and you see us with a passage, a very fast passage, that needed to be 100% together, we immediately practice it without pedal. It's just, it's more clear, you're more, you're, you're better hearing what's going on. So I'll pop that here, up for you here if you haven't seen it yet. Now, like I mentioned, there's so many benefits just from the simple fact that you hear better without pedal, so much better. There's so many benefits to practicing without pedal. But today we wanted to dive a little bit deeper into something very specific. And I wanted to start uh, with legato. So with our students, I see pedal interfering in two different ways with playing legato. And the first is actually not even realizing that you are not playing legato. I'll show you this example, uh, especially in things like arpeggios. Um, you would not hear if you are playing legato or not. If I play, for example, E major arpeggio. That was a beautiful legato. That was a beautiful legato. See, if you're not looking at the, my fingers, you would actually hear that it is legato, right? What I was actually playing, if I now remove the pedal, is this. Now, if you're not so aware technically of what you're doing, if you're not so advanced yet, if you still find it difficult to make a, a proper legato with your fingers, this is a very dangerous trap if you're never practicing without pedal because you could be playing many passages similar to this non legato when you are supposed to be training your technical ability to make legato with your fingers. So this is one of the things that, that I see with students who are only practicing with pedal that they're not realizing that they're not actually making legato. Now the other thing that I wanted to talk about, the other habit actually that if you practice, if you never practice without pedal that you might uh, develop, which is, in my opinion, even a worse habit, is the opposite. So not not being able to make legato, but overlapping your legato, which means holding, for example, when you should be releasing notes. I see this, I'm giving this example because I see this like nine times out of ten happening with this beautiful Bach prelude. So you're supposed to, right, hold these two fingers, that's supposed to be there, that's the articulation of the piece. You can pop that into the score for you to see. Uh, but the right hand is actually legato, you're not supposed to hold any fingers. What I see constantly happening with this piece is because you're holding these ones, right, with the left hand, very often if you're not independent yet with your fingers, your right hand would like to copy your left hand, so they're going to do this as well. This is a very, very bad habit to develop. So 
I'll show you that if you cover this with pedal, you are not able to hear if you are doing this habit or not. That was option one. I was actually holding my fingers. It's not gonna sound any different with pedal if I do option two, which is the proper technique of not holding the fingers in my right hand. So there is no difference with pedal. This would be something that you would be only aware of if you practice without pedal. So you're saying that with pedal, you can do this. That's one thing that you yeah. can do which is wrong, yeah. and the other thing... Holding everything. So with yeah. pedal you can do two things that are wrong and you wouldn't know. Absolutely, you would you... not be able to hear it. Exactly, so that's... that's. I think these probably are two... No, the third thing that we're going to mention is also, I think, as important. But it's a bit more advanced, so a this is, I advanced. think, for yeah. like a little bit more beginners who are not yet... Not even beginners, sometimes you see it with intermediate piano players... I do see it with intermediate, yeah. That, ...that forget about that, and that's something very important. So pedal can actually dis not distort, but play pedal can just cover what what you're doing, and you don't know exactly what's going on under that cover. And I think if you have the habit of regularly practicing without pedal, uh, you, you just kind of up your awareness of what's going on with your fingers. You become more aware generally as a habit uh, to feeling also what is going on with your fingers. The most important thing here is, in my opinion, is that you become the person who is aware of what's going on with your fingers, with your technique, while actually playing with or without pedal. For example, if I if I have to play something with pedal, like for example Cherny Etude, I'm I have to articulate the left hand. Right? I have to not do do this, or like Alvir said also, I don't have to I have to not form any intervals, not form any chords. By forming I mean overlapping, keeping more than one keys, and then, then you get, then you form intervals or chords. So when I play without, with pedal, I feel in my left hand that I'm articulating every single note. I have the sensation, the feeling, the experience. The moment that I keep two notes with pedal, like if I just play it like this, I know that I'm keeping two, two fingers pressed at the moment. I know that I'm keeping three fingers pressed. So. My point here is that you need to practice without pedal so much that when you put the pedal, you absolutely know and experience the sensation of what am I doing exactly? Am I playing legato? Am I playing non-legato? Am I overlapping? And aside from these two, I wouldn't call them really beginners. Beginners... Well, basic maybe, fundamental kind yeah, of technical things. That you really need. I would add one more thing that's a little bit more advanced advanced for those of you who play pieces that are a little bit... Even though you see that in beginner's pieces, Sometimes. and I'm talking about voicing, when you have more than one voice or playing the piano, because we have so many opportunities. Sometimes we have, very often we have more than one voice, the opportunity to do that. And what happens then is, if you're not aware, if you play everything with pedal, you might forget that sometimes one voice you need to keep longer and the other voice you need to keep shorter. That happens in many, many pieces. But I will just give you a small example I found by Chopin because it's about this piece. Already in the beginning, actually, we have that. You have, if you look at the, at the left hand, you repeat this eighth note because that's, that's another voice. Right? And you want to have... That was one example I wanted to give you. And the other example where I was looking at was in, uh, at the, third, in the third page of the piece. See what happens if you observe my hands. I, I will play without pedal so you can hear. Then... As you see, I keep some of the voices and the other voices I keep on playing right hand eighth notes, left hand quarter notes, while you, we have half notes that we need to keep pressed. 
This is very important because you learn about voicing. You learn about phrasing this way. Your, your music, the music that you play is going to sound so much better. It's a little bit more advanced, but it's extremely important and it is connected to being able to practice without pedal. Uh, because if you play everything with pedal and if you don't have the, the, the skills that Elvira just mentioned, this will be even more difficult and maybe even impossible. So you start with what she explained and then when you move on to pieces with different voices, you also practice without pedal so you can get skilled at that. And this practicing different voices, holding different voices is also a way of um, practicing and developing finger independence. Oh, that's actually very good. Um, I was just thinking that I was thinking that's what you're going to say and that's what you said. Yeah, very good. <laughs> because, you know, if you're in the beginning stages of piano playing, you need to develop hand independence, right? We just had the example of the Bach prelude in which you ha have to hold uh, your fingers in your left hand and not in your right hand, which is already very difficult if you're a beginner because, you know, you don't have hand independence yet. Nobody has that from the get-go. You need to develop that. And this about the voicing goes one step further because once hand independence is already a piece of cake for you, move on. You need finger independence, you know? All your fingers in, uh, independently need to be able to do different stuff. This will be all for today's video. This is what we wanted to share with you because we find it extremely important. If you become the person who practices without pedal, you will see a lot, a lot of improvement and a lot of awareness um, of your piano playing. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. You can follow us on Instagram and Facebook. We upload there regularly short, short fragments of our playing, short fragments of my composing because I started composing music. So you might enjoy that. If you do, just go and follow us there. Thank you so much for watching this video, for us recording it for you. It was a great pleasure as always. And we will see you next week again.